Hello and welcome, my name is Tris Magistus and today we're going to be reading through, speculating about and listening to the latest Factorio Friday Facts. Friday Facts 407, Automating a Soundtrack. Posted by Albert and Dunyan. So just to explain, I'm actually skipping to the end of the Friday Facts because I'm sort of aware that this is a bit of a techie one. It's also on music, so I don't think as many of you are going to be interested. It will be a full read through, we'll do the full speculation thing, but there are some frequently asked questions that I think a lot of people had at the end of the last Friday Facts. So I'm just going to run through those. So if you're not interested in the rest of it, then you know you can <laughs> skip out then. But there's sort of five questions here that get answered that came up out of the last week, out of last week's Friday Facts. Frequently Asked Questions from Last Week by Dunyan Which music plays when remotely viewing different surfaces and when switching surfaces? Each track is tied either to one planet or to space platforms. The surface you are currently looking at, either in regular mode when controlling a character or in remote view, is used to select the appropriate music track. When switching between surfaces, again, either with the character or with remote view, the music track is switched. The progress of the current track for each surface is remembered, so when the switch back to a surface that had music interrupted by a surface switch, the track will be resumed from the remembered place instead of restarting a new track. This way, you have the immediate peer feedback of switching surfaces, including its music, without constantly stopping and restarting it. Currently, the switch between different surfaces tracks happens immediately. However, this might change and some kind of transition, for example a short fade in or fade out, might be added depending on testing and feedback. So, <laughs> there's a gigantic sentence in there that is a bit confusing. So my interpretation of what that's saying is, is kind of as you'd expect, that if you're on Folgora, and you've been, you know, you're, as in the player character is on Folgora, and you've been, you know, listening to Folgora music, when you go to remote view and look at, say, Volcanus, it will switch to, vol to playing Volcanus-related music. And that includes these extra sample-y, you know, random sample-y ones. But it will remember where it got to on the original soundtrack that you were listening to. So on the Folgora soundtrack, it will remember where it was and it sounds like it'll remember properly where it was as in it, it had half got halfway through one of these randomized tracks i think now that's, that's what that's saying and so at the moment it just cuts it off and it'll go into the new soundtrack so that might mean then there's a pause you know before another volcanus one comes in or that the volcanus one will come straight straight away but it's like it remembers where it got to in that forward track and when you switch back again it'll start playing there this does open up the question of it it sounds like it's just going to remember where each soundtrack got to, to for, for every surface. Because you could be on Folgora, you're working away, you're listening to the music, you go and work on remotely on Volcanus and do that, and it plays some more tracks, you know, you're there for 20 minutes or something. Then you want to go to the space platform rather than back to Folgora, which I assume you can do. You don't have to go back to Folgora and then up to, you know, to watch the space platform. So it will then remember where it got to on Vol Volcanus and go to the space platform. It'll then play space platform music. And then when you switch away, it will remember where it got to a space platform. Do you see what I mean? So effectively, it's got five soundtracks running in parallel, which it pauses as you move to a different surface, and then it continues where it got to in that soundtrack. And then when, it, when you move there, it pauses there, and then it continues the next soundtrack where it got to. So it's effectively running five independent sound. Is that is it right, five? No, there's five plats, so it must be six with space as well. So six six soundtracks effectively. And those soundtracks, of course, are a mixture of the like full scored pieces and these randomized tracks. And I say it sort of remembers where it got to. Because I think they're going for the thing of it's trying to avoid too much repetition. Because if it, you know, randomly generates one of these ran, you know, these mixed together tracks and it got halfway through and it stopped and literally stopped rather than paused and you went and played away on there it, you might come back and it's and it randomly generates exactly the same track again and you have to listen to it all over again and you might go then to another planet and it does exactly the same do it another planet it does exactly the same do you see what I mean so you could end up listening to the same track loads and loads and loads of times over and over and over again because the variables it's using are you know the rng numbers are basically just you know re re be, use this using the same numbers basically could the music be made more dynamic and react to the game context. In order to not go into technical details last week, we weren't entirely accurate about the music player not knowing anything about the game state. Clearly it knows something if it can react to which surface is being viewed. However, this is the only variable from game state the music player takes into account. 
this is this thing I was saying last week about what you normally, what a lot of soundtracks do. I say normally, it's not really normal, but what a lot of soundtracks do is they'll have some kind of flag that says, right, you now you're in combat is, is the most normal one. But it might be based on a location that you've gone to or something like that. You've walked in a room, in a building, and it has different soundtracks for buildings. But basically, once you trigger that flag, it sends it to the music, and the music system basically reacts to it and says, right, now we're in combat, we play combat music. Now we're in this type of room, we play this type of music. And the point was that they'd said that it, it knows nothing about game state. And I think I actually pointed that, this out, but it does actually you know you can pass variables into the system but the only one that they pass at the moment is this planet view the engine having these limitations doesn't mean it would be impossible to pass more information along into the music player that's the easy part but the music itself would have to be composed with such a system in mind from the beginning years ago we would need to have all these conditions well defined in advance so peter could compose in a way it would all work together those are the difficult parts. I'm not saying it's impossible to do, but we went a different route. So yeah, so basically, I mean, it's just a, a function, basically. So they're just passing variables into a function and, you know, you can have as many as you want. So the point really is the game is not set up to have a flag that says you're in combat. There is no bounding box. There is no trigger in the, in the game code that says you're in combat. But that would actually be relatively trivial to add, obviously depending on how you actually wanted to do it. The difficult part is that the music is not reactive to that. So there is no combat music. And in this, you know, randomized system that the, you know, they're gonna I'm gonna go into later in the video, it, it would have to work in a very different way. It would have to have sets of music that are defined for these are the bits of music you can play in combat. These are the bits of the music you can play, you know, when your character is wearing power armor or whatever flag you might want to put in. And the game doesn't have music that it can use to do that. So you could pass it the variables. It wouldn't know what to do with them. It doesn't have a Oh, right, yeah, now we switch to this type of music or this this type of music because it's just not been built that way, basically. Long story short, if a more dynamic music hasn't happened by now, it most likely won't happen. Can we have fine control over music? There are no plans to add complex controls like custom playlists or per surface settings. A simple mod can be created to achieve that if someone really wants that feature. Simple controls are a different story. For 2.0, we have added options to bind a key to skip the current playing track, go back to the previously played track, and to pause and resume the music. Those sound like really nice little additions, actually. I don't know that I personally, if the music works for me, I think probably I'll just stick with it. This is what I was saying that last week where I have a complex relationship with game music in that a lot of it's too, um, gives me sensory overload, basically. What this is sort of saying is there's no fine tuning. So you can't, for example, you know, have Folgora music be quieter than Volcanus music. It's just the soundtrack and it's just controlled with a single set of the sliders in the in the settings. And that's it. There's no per surface settings. But it does look like they've added a few controls as if it was a you know music player to skip tracks, etc, etc. So what I would say there is maybe if there's a surface you don't like the music on, then you could probably just pause it while you're working on that surface. If it's just a single key, you know, key, key bind and then unpause it when you move away from that surface, basically. So it would then flip back to, as we were saying above, it would flip back to whatever, you know, soundtrack was on the other one. I suppose the risk there is that you would forget and you just end up with no music. But but yes, so no real fine control per surface. Will the music play all the time? So this was my big one. Obviously, this was the thing I was saying that one of the things I love about the soundtrack is that it has actual pauses, it's discrete songs. And so the answer is no, same as it is right now in 1.1. There will be randomized pauses between the tracks. At most, we would just tweak the pause duration to fit better with the lengths of Space Age tracks, but this is subject to feedback from testing. So brilliant. <laughs> Basically, we are gonna get those periods of silence between tracks. Although it sounds like, I mean, we know one of them yet, you know, last week was like eight minutes or something, wasn't it? And so they're much, much longer than the Nalvis soundtrack. So they may do some tweaking, it's saying, to the pause durations. Whether that means longer or, or shorter, I don't know. But it sounds like that that's something they're, they're kind of testing with it at the moment. But yes, massive, you know, massive relief for me that it is discrete songs. And these randomized ones that we're going to go on to talk about clearly are distinct tracks you know that beginning and end and then you'll get a pause and then you might get another one of the randomized ones or you might get a, you know a, a fully composed piece so that sounds brilliant you know big thumbs up thin big thumbs up there will the space age soundtrack be sold separately 
Yes, a digital version of the soundtrack will be available for purchase, same as the base game soundtrack. Which is great. I uh, I bought the soundtrack, obviously. I mean, I've, I've said in many and many of my live streams, I feel like I've underpaid the devs for the amount of time and enjoyment I've got out of Factorio. So having the ability to buy the soundtrack is great. Interesting point that they did make on the last soundtrack is the, the copyright is actually owned by um, the composer because he's not... Uh, you know, because that's how it's commissioned, I guess, how it's been subcontracted effectively. So, yeah, so it's just an interesting thing. I don't know that if that means they get a slice of the royalties. I'd, I'd say I don't know what the, the, you know, the terms are of that contract. But, yeah, that's an interesting thing. And that's going to be a lot. I assume that's going to be a similar sort of price. I mean, you, you no idea, no, no way of knowing, basically. But the current soundtrack is like an hour and because it, it includes a couple of bonus tracks. It's like an hour and a half long, I think. And so the new soundtrack is going to be, you know, four or five times as long as that. So it'll be interesting to see what it's priced at. My assumption also is that just means the composed soundtrack. If we've got these randomized things in it, effectively, it's an infinite soundtrack. That's that's what they're talking about with this system. So I can't imagine that those will be available. That would be interesting because it would be useful, I think, if you're a modder, if you want to sort of remix the tracks to be able to get at those individual sample pieces and have a go at those. So I don't know if those will be made available in some way as well. They may well be in the game code, you know, um, so people can get them that way. But that would be quite an interesting set of mods, actually, I think, to, to remix the soundtrack, basically using these randomized pieces and and maybe just you know slot a few in so that you've got a, a bigger even bigger scope you know of the randomized tracks the pre-composed pieces and the the modded versions as it were hello today we continue our musical journey motivation by albert last week we presented a general approach to the factorio space age music Freddy facts for a six we also mentioned that we have some new techniques to not only cover these five hours of music, but to also surpass them. This automatic way of making music is something that I was experimenting with a long time ago, before Factorio. I played a lot with random melodies on top of random bass sections with random rhythmic basses, all programmed with ActionScript. Yes, pretty old. The results were quite intense, but never good enough to consider them finished tracks. That we explained a bit more in the stuff below. I'm assuming by rhythmic basses, it's not meaning of the bass as in a, you know, as in the bass section. It means as in like 4 4 time or 5 4 time or something like that. I think that's what that's getting to, or getting at rather. But I think the idea, and say so this is what it kind of goes on to explain, is effectively slices of little samples of melodies, little samples of bass tracks, which are then arranged in a timeline with a random order. That's not quite random, it's more like a, a random you know going through a repeating list as well and then basically sort of repeating those on top of each other and varying them about to give like variations in music tracks i think that's what it's getting getting at as the the thing let's say it's based on what they, they go on to explain when the five hour soundtrack project for factorio space age started i immediately thought of these old experiments now, having Peter composing and Dunyan programming, the thing looked different. I just dared to go this way. Now I'm convinced that this was a good decision. Variable Music Tracks by Dunyan These tracks play out differently each time they are selected. They are a kind of procedurally generated music, but we don't want to go too crazy with the randomization. A variable track is more like a set of variations of a single track without the need to record them all. These tracks take the place of the interludes which play between the main tracks, unless you go rooting around in the hidden settings. The goal is to provide some variety in the music up to tens or hundreds of hours spent in game. Regular music is still the main focus and the large majority of the soundtrack. I have to confess I didn't know there were interludes as such in the game. Maybe that's just some pieces are considered interludes and others are considered proper soundtracks. There are the like atmospheric tracks on the soundtrack. Maybe that's what's being referred to. Those are the ones I usually play as just like an under under thing, just to give a bit of it variability in the videos that I do. You know, so you, you might be one playing underneath now, but when that little underneath sound comes in, that's one of the uh, the interludes. So maybe those. Uh, one of the like atmospheric tracks, so though maybe those are considered the interludes. But the basic point of this is, and it explains it um, sort of elsewhere. But the proper tracks are still the proper tracks. You know, the proper composed songs are pe full pieces that they won't be fiddling about with. Uh, and that's the one that you know they've got now got five hours of new stuff for those, and an hour from now this. So those are the proper tracks. But the basic idea is that there will also be these more randomised tracks. 
although they're not properly randomized it's not like a, a procedural way of generating tracks and so those have more variability and the basic idea appears to be just to you know do a spoiler on the whole video is that those are slices of samples like bits of songs that can be repeated or can be switched out for other variations. One of the things that this is a bit dependent on is a basic understanding of music theory because it's sort of using techniques where... So a variation of a track might be doing a slightly different chord progression. And I say that really will only make sense if you know music theory, where you maybe switch out from a you know, 1 4 5 to a you know, 1 5 4 or something like that, where you switch the order of the chord progression that you're doing, and it's still the same chords, and therefore it's still all harmonious and sounds good together, but it just gives a different flavor, a different feel, a different tempo, you know, that sort of thing to the music and that's the idea that what they've done is recorded those variations and then they'll play the variations in a different order you know maybe they'll repeat one a few times and then put in a different variation and repeat that a bit and the sort of layering up of different levels which says what they're all coming to i shouldn't really be saying this because it's all coming up but the layering up of that will give a completely different song but not radically different it's just a bit tweaked and so the idea seems to be that by having that, if you've been playing for thousands of hours like I have, you've heard the same tracks over and over. And I say that to me, this is the power of the soundtrack, that I don't get bored of it. Yeah. But the idea is that it gives you some variety, makes it a little bit more interesting, makes you maybe pay attention a bit more to the music and the, the atmosphere that it's projecting, rather than it just being, oh, I've heard that a million times, it's all background to me. Variable music tracks are defined in the prototypes fully available to modders. These are the components used to define a variable track. Samples. These are the smallest building blocks. They are individual pieces of music which get played according to other rules. Samples are played after each other, so when one sample finishes, the playback seamlessly continues into the next sample. And so that was what I was saying. You might have a pro chord progression that is, you know, one, four, five. Uh, and I say that it won't mean anything to you if you don't know a, bit, a little bit of music theory, and I'm not, not great at it. But you can understand the principle that you play one chord, you know, one type of chord, another type of chord, another type of chord. But if you play those in a slightly different order, then it sound, it's going to sound the same because it's the same chords, but it's also going to sound different because they're in a different order. So that's an example of the different samples that you might create. Layers. Samples are grouped into layers. Layers dictate how individual samples are composed together. It could be as simple as selecting samples randomly, shuffling all available layers so each plays exactly once, or it could be more complicated with samples being selected based on which sample is currently playing in a different layer. Layer can also contain sublayers where samples overlap in a specific way. Further variations within a layer can be done using a number of properties, defining delayed start, number of repetitions, and pauses between repetitions for shuffled layers offsets for of overlapping sublayers, etc. These properties come either from layers themselves or according to the current state of the track. So there's a lot crammed in there and it's basically taking those samples and defining the structure of how the, the, the samples are used. Okay. An simple example as they give is that you randomly shuffle all of those samples. You've got 10 samples, you know, one, two, three, four, five, you know, numbered sequentially. You do a random shuffle, and so you put them in a different order. So seven, three, two, one, nine, five, et cetera, et cetera. But you only play them all once. So literally every sample just gets played once. Or it could be something that it, it plays sample one five times, then sample two five times, then sample three five times. Could be that that could be an example but it also may have interrelationships between layers and the sub layers so for example you might have it so that like layer one you know sub layer one is always plays this track and then sub layer two plays a different track but it varies it up based on some other factor a better example might be layer one switches between three tracks and depending on which one it's on that's three samples rather and depending on which sample it's on then it will play in a sublayer a different sound sample. The example there, and they'll get onto it, is that you you've got a high pitched part, you know, sample and a bass sample. So you will play the play the high pitched, you know, the melodic sample uh, as a particular pattern, and the bass as a particular pattern. And of course, as we all know, typically bass lines will repeat 
you know, because they're a, 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 a part of the rhythm section or a link between the rhythm and the melody. And so you might play the bass more repetitively than you would perhaps play the uh, melody line. Layers and their samples are played aligned to the smallest time unit each track defines for itself, creating a sort of time grid. The way layers are composed is the main source of variation. They, you know, they have a, a timestamp basically that allows them to be kind of ordered in a particular order, you know, well, aligned in a particular order. And the, the way they're getting this procedural generation is predominantly through that arrangement of samples in a layer, basically. So there doesn't appear to be any part of this, this that is sort of about, you know, you could pitch shift, shift samples, for example, or you could adjust the tempo of a sample or... Those would be other types of variations you can do, and it's not really about that. It's more about arranging the samples in a particular order. Sections. Sections are collections of layers. There can be one section or multiple of them in a track. Which section is used is determined by the track state. Additionally, sections can overlap. When there is only one section, it can overlap itself. Lastly, a section can contain an intermezzo, which is played as a normal piece of music, providing an option to compose a hybrid track, part variable, part static. So an intermezzo is, it's basically an intermission. <laughs> so basically it's, if you have, you know, a set of songs and it's a, uh, like you're watching a play, for example, that's a, a good example. And there might be music in this play, you know, that's playing along the soundtrack. And then there's a scene change, or then there's a new act, basically. And so there may be an actual intermission, and so you would have intermezzo music, the intermission between those two acts. So it's not music that's actually part, it's not meant to convey, you know, emotion, feeling in the actual play itself. It's just a bit of music that fits in between, perhaps thematically similar and stylishly, you know, continues the continues the theme, but it's not actually relating to anything you're sort of watching in the play. And it just fills in that that gap and say maybe they're doing a scene change behind the curtain or um, there is actually a proper intermission or something like that. So the idea, I think, is that you have a, you can have a section that is the more randomised piece, and then it can play one of these composed pieces, and then it can go back to the the you know these more randomised pieces. So effectively, you could take that two minute say Nalvis track, for example, and have the bits on the end and the beginning turn it into a four minute piece, and they're stylistically similar or you know thematically related to that middle piece. But that middle piece is the, the same piece of music you would recognise. It's just it's being given a bit more on the front and end. So again, it gives them a bit more variability. So they can still play you the same music that you recognise, but add a bit more colour and flavour to it, basically. States. States and transitions between states are the high-level way to define how a variable track is composed. They select which section should play and whether it should overlap the previous one, and they define a number of layer properties which are applied to the current section's layers. Transitions between states can be based on elapsed time, or they can be tied to a specific layer finishing. Multiple possible next states can be defined, with different weights to some transition will be more likely than others. Next state candidates can have additional conditions defined. These conditions have to be met for the state to be considered for certain transition. For example, a transition can be set to only happen if a specific sample is playing in a specific layer at the time of the next state selection. I'll be honest, I didn't fully understand this one and quite how it's different to the sections. I think it's like the overall aim, as it were, of the piece. So in other words, if the sections are the you know, this is the defined piece of track, then effectively, again, I think it's a bit like, you know, I said about you could have the bit at the start, it plays the main, you know, the actual composed piece of music, the bit at the end. I think it's saying that the, because of the states thing, you could actually have, you know, a composed bit at the start, and then it has a choice of which composed bit of music it, start, it goes between, and then a choice again, as to which one it picks at the end. I think that's what it's getting at, but so I didn't quite fully understand this one and how it's different to the sections. But yeah, I think that's what it's getting at. So it's giving it even more options. So it's not always going to play, you know, random track or random piece, same piece of um, composed music, same random random piece. It can vary up between them, I think. Now that we know what variable tracks are made of, let's look at a couple of examples of how a track gets composed. Please understand that these examples are a tech demo still in progress. Some details may change. 
The music itself is not representative of what it will be in the game on release. These samples are quite old and made for illustration purposes. Just to preempt it a bit, I think they're saying that particularly about this first one, because this is a bit messy and not really like something you would want to listen to in the game. I also think this first one, and possibly all of these, well, not the last last piece, but possibly there's a use of, you know, like just electronic music, just, you know, it's just been generated for them to play about with the system. And it doesn't actually use the stuff that, that you know, Peter has, has actually composed for them. So, yeah, this first one, as I say, bit of a warning, as I say, this is a bit horrible, in my opinion. You might you, you may view it differently, but uh, this is not really a track that would be in the game. It's just the principle of how it's working is what they're testing. And the first example is a track containing three sections. Each section has three layers, a base layer made up of two sub-layers, a middle layer, also made out of two sub-layers, and a melody layer and an intermezzo. Transitions between states are made on the melody layer finishing. Okay, so again, I don't quite understand that, that states thing, but, but it sounds like it's those are the like big chunks, as it were, and then when the melody switches, it can go between these different options, I think. So, uh, the first part here is, is a sort of a graphical representation, sort of showing what's going on. There's then a track which we'll listen to and... I say comment on because they give kind of timestamps for when changes happen. So the first part here, oh I'm sorry. Time grid for tempo alignment. So that's just the the lines here. Hopefully that's coming through on the video, but there's a series of lines, vertical lines showing timestamps basically, and we have time codes at the top here. Um, so that you can see you know where it is in the, the listing. Apologies if that doesn't quite come through on the video, but I can see those. A layer can start with a specific sample. Sample number one in this case. So this sample here, you see this wiggly line in the middle. If you've never seen audio tracks, that is the basic the sound wave, basically, for the for the piece of music. Um, and the two will be there, I think, simply because it's left and right audio. So, you know, this is more loud, basically, in, in the right, right ear. The bass layer has two overlapping sublayers offset from each other. So the top one there, I think, did it say it was melody? So I'm assuming this red one then is is the melody and that we now get into um, the bass. So I don't know if it's just not showing that, or these these are the bass somehow, but I, I thought that was uh, the melody, as I say. Samples are selected randomly. However, the same sample can't be repeated immediately. So that's a rule that they've set for this particular piece. So I don't know where two's gone. <laughs> I'm assuming these are the numbers, so the samples have literally been just given these numbers. It's, I think it says that it's very, very small, but there appears to be an A1.wav, an A3.wav, and an A4.wav. Wav just being a, a, a music file type. I think that's what it's there. It's, my eyes are not, not good enough to really see that. But yeah, so this is the first sample piece. This is the third sample piece. This is the fourth sample piece. So it's effectively randomly selecting pieces. Other sublayer breaks immediate repetition. Sample four plays between repetitions of sample three. I'm not quite sure what that's saying. I think basically it's repeating sample three, because this appears to be longer, This although it's called A3.wav, it appears to be longer. I think it's just got a, a longer tail end on it, so maybe they can just chop the length of the samples. Don't know. Overlap offsets can be variable, either one or two time units for the base layer. Is this all the base layer then? I say I, I struggle with, this is you know where I get into a bit where I'm struggling to understand what's, what's going on. I actually find this diagram like, le it's it's more helpful it's helpful from a like you know seeing it point of view but the explanations here and I, I did add this when I was reading it through the first time don't quite make sense to me you know I'm not clear if this is all the base layer and it's got because it's got two sub layers in it and you know why are these different lengths when they seem to say that you couldn't chop the length of them off and why you know this is labeled two and it's different colors but then this is labeled three and that's different that's the same color so I'm not entirely sure what's represent, being represented in these, so apologies. More samples. So they appear to be repeating some of them. This must just all be the base, you know, base component because it's actually, these are the same, aren't they? So A4 WAV is being repeated, but at different layers. So effective, I mean, effectively, I guess the way you could think about this is if this was a two set, two guitars, or I guess using the classical instruments, you know, this is two trombones. And effectively, they're playing the same bits of music. So they're playing a note, you know, note 
progression of just CDE or something, you know, random. So that's, you know, what, you know, that sample is. And then in a, ver a variation of it is DEC or something like that. And so they play those variations, but of course you've got two instruments playing at the same time. Ah, second layer starts playing with a delay. Okay. So that's the delay, obviously. And that's B6 dot wav. So clearly that is properly different. It also has two sublayers. So this is two parts here. Overlap offsets are fixed to one time unit. So the overlap, I guess, is this. So it always overlaps these by one. And then it does the same thing, more samples, just putting in more music. Even more samples. What's the actual difference there? I think it's just going longer, isn't it? So I think that's kind of where it chops off in the previous diagram. I'm being a bit useless with explaining this. The melody layer has a single sub layer. So this is definitely the melody then. It's certainly a longer piece of music. And then that's been melody layer samples are shuffled. Each is played once. So two, one, three, four. I would have expected, you know, bass to be at the bottom. <laughs> so maybe that's what threw me. But I think you get the basic impression, even though, as I say, my explanation of that was just rubbish, wasn't it? But I think you get the basic idea that it's chopping and changing these tracks, but it's repeating the same pieces over and over. It's overlapping them between two different you know, instruments effectively, repeating them at different intervals. And there's clearly some you know, queuing off of other tracks. It can do it so that it only plays each one once and just, you know, cycles through all of them. Or it can do it that it will play, you know, randomly selected multiple time type pieces. OK, so next part then is kind of an example of this. And again, I do want to emphasize, and certainly when I was listening to this through, it's not a, it's more like a proof of concept rather than a sort of a proper coherent track. So it's a bit all over the place. But as I say, it's just li literally like a proof of concept. So bear that in mind when it's listening to it. We, we will not hear this in, in the game. So it says, this is how an instance of this track might sound. And I'm just going to, like I did last week, just play it through and then we'll kind of go through it. And we'll try and identify these points because this is what's meant to be happening. You know, this is what's... These these weird things going on. This is what the description of is is is, is, is that's happening in this track.
Okay, so I'll be honest, I found that quite difficult to listen to. I don't know about you. It's very, very sort of random and bitty and all over the place. But that's the point. You know, it's a proof of concept of something like this. And if you look at this, this is a very busy, messy timeline. So that's kind of, as I say, what it's doing. It's also, you know, I don't know about you, I found it very soulless. It feels like something that's being chopped. It's a series of pieces that are just chopped together. And it's also, it lacks, you know, sort of coherence to it. But as I say, that's the point. You know, it's not trying to be a piece of music. It's trying to prove a concept. So you do have to listen to it in that point of view. So the images are only an illustration and do not correspond to the recording. Here is an actual timeline. So basically this is not this, but it's the same sort of principle. I say we'll try and go through and roughly identify what's going on where you might want to skip ahead again because it is going to be the same piece of music again and I say I don't I find this quite um that boring to listen to actually as a piece of music but so it's not it's not it's not there for that purpose so I got to keep reminding myself of that okay so starting off one second so basically start track the track starts in the begin state section 2 is selected randomly and of course at the same time bass layer starts <laughs> Okay, so at 12 seconds the middle layer starts, and then at 17 seconds the mid melody layer starts. So let's try and listen out for those. So that sounded like the strings coming in was the middle, middle layer. Now that other, there's a, a, like a longer string that seems to start at 17. I think that might be the melody layer. I'm actually going to skip ahead a bit, I think, because, so... <laughs> it's fun to listen to so the next part start then is uh, 44 seconds so we'll go up to about 34 where it says the melody layer finishes its first repetition queuing a pause before the second repetition Yes, yeah, so that longer string piece seems to stop. Uh, then says 51 seconds, melody layer starts its second repetition. So 51, that should come back in again. Yeah, so that longer string stab comes in. Okay, so the next piece then, we'll move it along a little bit. Uh, 119, the melody layer finishes its second and final repetition, queuing a pause before finishing playing. But then get into a complex section, we'll just try and hear that. So we've got that long string stand. Yeah, so that seems to have gone now. Right, so we're about to get into this uh, little complicated section where at 123, the melody layer finishes playing, triggering a transition to the interstate. A section different than the previous one is selected randomly, section zero in this case. And at 123, also the bass layer and middle layer continue playing, now with samples from section zero. And at 123, the melody layer, melody layer starts playing again. I wonder if they missed at the time, because... How can it transition to the interstate and also start playing again? Maybe those are going to happen in parallel. So we'll hear that long string stab maybe and an, another part, the inter part. We'll see what happens. Oh, yes. So something else has happened now. We've got a different, more like a cello type type piece has come in. And it seems to have replaced something, the middle, middle maybe, but we've definitely switched into a different part of the track. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it goes up to 142, where again we, we get this um, transition by the looks of things. So 142, the melody, melody layer finishes playing its first and only repetition. This time without pause after triggering without a pause after triggering a transition to continue state immediately. At 142 also the section which has was selected in state begin is used again. So that was the part of the, at the beginning. Of two, the melody layer uses the same sample shuffling as in the begin state. So effectively, the piece is, is, is switching back to what it did at the beginning. So in convention, you know, in conventional song terms, perhaps we've had the verse, that little bit was the chorus, and now we're going back to the verse again. So we're sort of going back to 
to what we had before at 142. So we'll see if we can detect that. So it's certainly a change. Difficult to know if it's fully back to, to kind of what, what it was before. Okay, so next part then. 209, Melody Layer finishes playing its first and only repetition. Again, without pause after triggering a transition to finish state immediately. It keeps saying like Melody Layer plays its only repetition and only thing. Uh, it must be that it means different, you know, different, um, uh, what did he call them, samples within it. Because we can't have the melody can't play its only you know first thing four times, so they must be di talking about different samples basically. Don't know. Section one, two hundred nine. Section one uh, is selected as the only one still unused. So section one has not been played before, and so it now comes in. Yeah, it was a different transition. Yeah, that sounds more like the cello sounds again. 235 Melody Layer finishes its first repetition. Again, it's had like four first repetitions. It continues with a second one without pause. Can't really tell what happened there. I don't know if there might have been a difference. I don't know. Last then, 303, Melo de Lair finishes its second and final repetition. Oh, cuts off rather suddenly, doesn't it? So I think uh, what may be happening here is effectively it's talking about, you know, once it's reset in a sense in this middle section, then it will do the re repetitions again like it did before. But as I say, it's not a nice piece of music i mean I, you know there's nothing wrong with individual bits of it it's just the way it sort of sticks it all together is not doesn't make it a a, a a nice piece to listen to the second example shows a track with only one section but it overlaps itself when transitioning between states at fixed time intervals the section has three layers there is also a chance to play an intermezzo if a specific sample played in the first layer sample for the first layer is selected randomly so this is the first Sample for the first layer, and that's been randomly selected. Sample of the second layer, selected selected based on the sample of the first layer. And this was what I was saying about the two being interlinked. There are three options. So when it selects this first one, it then says, right, well, you can play 13, 14, or 15. So these are now coherent pieces that work together. There are three options that work really well with piece five. We can also see with these, and I think it's kind of resolving some of the issue here, is that these are now much more longer pieces, so you're not going to get that really rapid, sharp repetition of completely, you know, different variations that is actually what's kind of jarring about that first piece. Sample for the third layer is selected based on the sample of the first layer as well. There are three options again. So we now have another melody piece, but it's picking from the same list again. So they've said 13, 14 or 15 can work with it. So picked one and then picked another one. So it's picked exactly the same from exactly the same list of options basically but it's done it a second time after 40 seconds be interesting to know if that's randomized the state changes and the section overlaps itself the sample for the first layer is randomized again so in other words this is repeated after 40 seconds so we get this second iteration of it the second repeat of it as it were but it overlaps which is interesting Samples for the layer two and three are selected based on the sample of the first layer again. So it's not repeated because that I can just about see, you say, my terrible eyesight. That says AO5 and that says AO6. So this is actually a separate piece. It's just it's picked another one. That's interesting. So we're now layering up, you know, quite a lot of layers. And then this one, P6 has 16, 17 or 18 are good options of things to play with six. And so it randomly selects two of those again. Playing sample number six in the first layer had a 50% chance to trigger a transition into an intermezzo instead of overlapping itself again for the next state change. Okay, so what that's basically saying is that if six was, you know, the code clearly has a bit in it that says if six was picked, you know, when it did this random selection, if six was picked, that gave a 50% chance to go back to the, the first version, the first you know thingy, or to pick one of these intermezzo pieces. So let's see if we can kind of, because this is, and this is how this one might sound. So this is what's being shown in the picture this time. 
and it just says recorded in game using work in progress version so as as the other one did basically so although they're recorded in game using the code we know that this isn't a proper track in the game so maybe this is closer to a proper track in the game i don't i don't think it will actually be how it is in the game that's what the point they're making but maybe it's a bit more like the game tracks So that's a bit more successful, I think. I'm not a particular fan of the way it sort of wor warbles in and out sort of thing. It's a weird sort of... And I don't know if that's an interference that's happening between the, the different audio tracks, but or the, you know, the samples. But you, And you can definitely hear... So at this halfway point is when this intermezzo seems to kick in. Give or take. I mean, obviously, we don't know how squished this up, how squished up this is. But basically, it seems to be that around this point... This is when this other track comes in. And also you can kind of hear these, because these are distinct, like, stabs of, you know, track, basically. And those seem to be fairly distinguishable. So I think that does work a bit better, as I say, mainly because they're longer pieces. And this, effectively, you can imagine, this is the, like, drone that's going on. And as is this, they're very, very similar in style. And that's what this main piece is. And I say, I suspect these are the, the, the atmospheric, the ambient tracks on the, the soundtrack and then these are just adding in the the little stabs of extra sound on top just to make it feel more like a, a piece of music rather than just a, a drone you know but yeah i think that works better and it seems to work a lot better with longer pieces of music rather than at these these extremely sharp stabs i do wonder as well if this isn't i mean you can actually see that and if you well you may not be on the video but this I think is meant to be the equivalent of that piece of time. So this is actually, it's not quite as short as it were. This is a track as, as, as you know, it appears compared to this. You know, this is sort of extending out maybe. Technical challenges by Dunyan. As it turns out, when it comes to music, timing and transitioning things correctly is important. I know, I was shocked too. Cueing samples. Samples need to be played one after each other without any gaps in order to maintain the track's overall tempo and to avoid audio artifacts, as someone from our forums recently found out the hard way. So this is just, I'm not going to go through this, but basically someone pro reported a, a bug, essentially, which was, that I think they were trying to do something with programmable speakers by just skimming through this, basically. And essentially they were trying to queue up tracks, you know, queue up samples in with programmable speakers. And they were getting this, basically, where... There were disconnect discontinuities between the soundtracks. So you would have this track go along here and then suddenly quick, it goes up there. So it's not smoothly playing transitions, essentially. The basic point was made that, well, sorry, <laughs> that's a feature, not a bug, basically. That that's kind of how it, it just works. It's not intended to do smooth transitions between samples. 
The music player updates 60 times per second, same as the rest of the game logic. Simply checking if a current sample finishes playing to start playing the next sample is not enough, as there could be up to 16.67 milliseconds, one second divided by 60, gap between them destroying the tempo. Taking the checks outside of the regular update logic into a separate thread or using callbacks for when a sample finishes playing wouldn't work either because of how audio data are mixed together by the SDL mixer library, version 2.04, we're using. So the basic point there is that you don't really know when a track has, a uh, you know, sample, sorry, has properly finished. So if you're trying to play one literally with no gap between the two samples, you want them butting up to each other, Unfortunately, you don't actually know. Effectively, it's like trying to press play when that one stops. And you don't know exactly when it stopped from a, like, 1 one sixtieth of a... Because, as we were saying in another Friday Facts, the game updates every 60 times a second. So there's a time period between each stop. So the track could actually finish anywhere in that 1 one sixtieth of a... It's tiny... It's enough to detect from your, you know, from your hearing, basically. Um, you know, it's a small enough sample, you know, gap that you would be able to hear it go, you know, change. But also you would hear the tempo change because if it's, if it's, you know, ticking along, you know, doing the track at a particular, you know, um, tempo, particular number of beats per second, and then there's a tiny little gap and then it's, you know, doing the same speed, that one, you know, 16.67 milliseconds is, is is enough for you to detect it. So if the game was updating at, you know, 200 frames a second or something, that's probably would be small enough that you wouldn't actually detect that, you know, that shift of tempo. But that 16.67 milliseconds is enough for you to detect. And so you would hear it, a tiny extra pause or a short, shorter pause between the, the tempo, even though it's exactly the same it wouldn't be exactly synced because you cannot know in that one sixty, you know, one one sixtieth of a second exactly when the track finished and exactly when to press start on the next track because of how they're doing it, basically. With our current settings, audio is mixed in chunks of 512 samples. These are the audio signal samples, not the music samples, which, with the sampling frequency of 44.1 kilohertz, makes a mixing interval of roughly 11.6 milliseconds. Even if we detected the exact moment when a single sample finishes playing, we wouldn't be able to start playing the next sample right at that moment. There will be a gap of 11.6 milliseconds long again. What we really need is a way to cue our music samples. So again, it's the same point essentially that you don't know, you can't know because of how it's doing the updates. 41.1 kilohertz is basically, I think it's like the top frequency of, you know, it's like your top hearing that, um, it goes way back to CDs. It's basically the sampling rate for CDs, but that's like the fastest it's sampling at. Yeah. And so that's the fastest frequency it can detect any change. So the track, you know, that's a sample could happen. The track could stop and then another sample happens. And so it starts playing and says, oh, there's nothing playing. I'll play the next song. But there's going to be an interval between those two where the track has actually ended. And because of how it's done, you can't know if it's in that gap. You can't know exactly when it stopped. So you're always going to get this problem that you can't start and stop it. So instead, what you need to do is to basically cue those up. So the game does knows just to keep playing continuously, essentially. The SDL Mixer library doesn't provide such functionality. So, so this comes back to the fact that you can obviously play tracks continuously so long as they're click queued up. But the point is it doesn't if it's doing this thing where it's picking tracks and sticking them in, you know, this isn't a predefined list. You know, this isn't a predefined playlist. If it was a predefined playlist, it wouldn't have any gaps at all because it knows exactly when it's stopping and when to start the next track. And it can match up tempos and all that sort of stuff. But because you're randomly picking things, it doesn't know when they finish necessarily. The mix, the SDL Mixer library doesn't provide such functionality. I needed to build it myself on top of SDL Mixer with some modifications to SDL Mixer itself. This is not the first time I needed to add a feature to the audio backend. So undeterred, I had to, a queuing system working fairly quickly. Now, the music player can queue samples in its leisurely 16.67 milliseconds window, window and a separate feeder thread takes care of stitching the samples together correctly 
while using the SDL mixer doesn't even know it happened. So basically in that update frame, so it goes from frame one to two to three to four in that 16.767 milliseconds, so that up game update frequency, it's got the time to pick the samples that it wants to do and say, right, well, these are the sample samples, stitch them together so that they are a, you know, a, a, a playlist and feed that to SDL Mixer and it'll play them like a, you know, like a predefined playlist, basically. Or maybe it actually sticks them together. Maybe it makes them into one one track, I don't know, but basically it eliminates the issue. We have kind of gone very techy, by the way. So, so if this sort of stuff isn't your, uh, <laughs> your cup of tea, then feel free to skip ahead to this speculation of which I'll be honest, there isn't a lot, but transitions between samples. As you can see in the pictures above, the same sample can be played with different lengths. So that's what I was referring to here, where you've got, you know, this is lasting four, and then this one is lasting three, and this version of it is lasting two. So they can be chopped up in length. For instance, in the first example, in picture five, sample three, yellow, is pl first played for three units of, of the grid, and then it is played for four units. Unless we want to have variants of the same sample saved in many lengths, which we don't, we often need to cut a sample short before playing the next sample. When you do that, you can end up with unpleasant audio artifacts or clicks. A similar thing can happen when you're changing playback position in a music or video player, if you want to try it yourself. What happens is that there is a big jump in the audio signal's level, and it sounds like a click or a pop. The signal becomes discontinuous if we want to use big words. You can hear the clipping artifact in this recording, which was taken using an older version. You might need to turn your volume up. It is clear that something has to be done about this. So I'm going to play this and listen to it. It may not come through on the video. You can obviously go and um, what you know, look at the Friday Facts yourself to, to try and hear this. Turn your speakers up, etc., etc. I don't want to blow your ears out. So you know, I'll just do this at my normal levels, and you can go and fiddle about with it. And so you can listen to it. You can hear them. They are a bit subtle. They are, and I'll try and indicate when I've just heard one. Um, but but yeah, we'll play this through and, and see if we can hear these. <laughs> Yeah, so they are there. <laughs> it's a bit subtle. And so you probably need to go and listen to that yourself if you really want to understand that. I'm sure you get what the point is, though, that as it's going, you know, it, it's actually um, it, these, basically. So this here is what's happening, where it's basically flicking between something that's, you know, a particular volume. And so you get a sort of a, a flick up, basically, of... Now I'm, I'm, you know, changing volume causes a, a click to happen, essentially. But yeah, that one is a bit subtle, so you're probably best off going and listening to yourself. The way to solve this is to fade out and or fade in samples over a short period of time. 
let's say 10 milliseconds as they come one and after one after another that way the transition is nice and smooth or continuous you might find some audio processing applications do this sort of thing automatically by default sounds straightforward and sdl mixer provides a way to fade in and fade out samples so what's the problem the built-in fading functionality of sdl mixer calculates the same target volume for the entire chunk being mixed in the 11.6 millisecond interval this means that the entire fade will fit into one mixing interval so we end up with just one volume level so there is no fading at all not to mention that it's impossible to time the fade out accurately i didn't and i'll be honest i still don't fully understand that one i think the point is that when you're wanting to switch between these tracks so when you're wanting to go between say there is quite a good example i don't know if it's the yellow ones and that's why i mentioned it but there's one where they're actually both sort of properly loud um here you go so something like this versus something like this where it's going from very quiet to sort of quite loud and sort of the same volume to the same volume you would probably expect maybe that one doesn't have the click and that one does have the click possibly as i say i don't i don't actually know how it would uh, manifest but the basic idea is what you do instead is you fade so you just drop the volume to zero for the one that's playing and you know bring up the volume on the one that's doing and so it's it's not doing an instantaneous move from say you know just to use a random number one decibel to five decibels it's not it's not going to be that but that sort of jump is what's causing the click whereas if you bring them both together you know or they're already quite similar you're not going to get that click so what you do instead because you can't bring them together because you've got you know pieces that are not the same uh, is you have the one that's coming in fade down and the one that's it coming in fade up so it's then just you know it's, you know volume going up and down rather than instantaneously jumping but the point they're making is that that fade is done in the one the sample frequency so effectively there is no and it targets a midpoint and so effectively you get the same thing so if you're going from basically nothing to basically full volume all it does is it's going to say right the halfway between that point is you know you know there sort of thing so my fade is to that point to that point and it does it so tries to do it so quickly that it's actually just the same it's just doing a massive jump and a massive jump because of the sampling frequency i think that's what it's saying but i say that one's a bit lost on me again audio is not really my bag if i'm honest i mean I, you know i love music and i love you know sound and stuff like that but i've never done anything with working with um, actual programs that do sound basically luckily SDL Mixer provides support for attaching filters or effects to samples. In the filter, we can do whatever we want with the audio data. Writing our own fader with sample level precision, again, those are the audio signal samples, as a filter is trivial. Add an option to delay the fade to the exact moment we need it and voila, no more annoying clicks. So yeah, basically, by adding a filter, you know, an effect, so that is a fairly standard thing to do, means they can write one that's just to fade, you know, bring the audio down, bring the, the audio up. And so you just solve it by sticking this um, effect on it, basically. Aligning layers. Timing is also important when it comes to all the layers and sub-layers playing together. They need to be aligned or synchronized into a time grid defined by a smallest unit of time for a given track. The first example uses 286 milliseconds, which is 12,600 samples as its time unit. When the SDL's audio thread is mixing, it needs to lock the audio vice to avoid race conditions with other threads the rest of the game. Only one thread should change the active audio resource at any given time. For the same reason, when we want to start playing a sample, the audio device is locked. Even if some layer of a variable track doesn't start playing for some time after the track itself is started, we can't wait with starting the play layer because we have no way of starting it at an exact time. There is no start playing in X milliseconds functionality, and even if there was one, there would still be the problem of mixing in chunks I mentioned already. So we need to start all layers at the same time to have them aligned, the ina inactive ones will be playing silence. The audio thread can jump in and lock the audio device at any time. If we have the bad luck of it happening in, in the moment we started the first two layers out of a total of five layers, for example, the remaining three layers would be started 11.6 milliseconds later out of alignment. SDL Mixer doesn't provide explicit locking functions. 
SDL itself does provide them. However, SDL Mixer tries to acquire the lock for most operations. So some little tweaks are needed anyway, but it's not a difficult thing to add. Similar problems need to be addressed when a layer is not playing anything in the middle of a track. It can't be just stopped because we couldn't restart it at the precise moment we need it again. It is left playing silence aligned to the time grid. I kind of read that one through because it's another one I'm not 100% on exactly what it's saying. My interpretation is that you see how we have these layers. Okay, so we've got five on this. Basically, the point is like when the game starts, when it starts playing audio for you, it actually starts playing all five of these layers. Okay, and they are always playing continuously because what can happen is that because of the whole nature of, you know, how you do the updating of the game, the audio system can select your, you know, your audio and lock it so that you can't make any changes. You can't start playing something. You can't stop playing something. And so if it's locked it and you're trying to start a new track, so you're trying to start this one here, for example, layer three, and it's locked it because it's doing an update or it's in a particular part of the update cycle, it won't start. It will just go into a queue, basically, is usually how it works. And so when that is unlocked and it can start a track, it will start it then immediately. So then it, it's desynchronized, basically. So it's basically this is going at a tempo of da 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 da, and then another one comes along and it's out of sync, and so you're getting da 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 da, -da and it's all a mess, and that it's just uh, you know sounds horrible. So instead, what they do, as I say, is they start all of the tracks at the same time. They're all playing continuously. It's just that sometimes they're set to silence. So in other words, this here is silence. It is playing silence. And what they do instead, because these are tracks, they queue them up. And you can queue this quite a long way in ahead, obviously. You know, you could set this whole free, this whole thing up, you know, ages in advance. And you just queue it up as a set of, right, play these tracks in this track listing. I keep calling them tracks, the samples, aren't they? Play these samples in this sample listing. So you can keep adding more stuff on here. If you're here, you know, and it locks the system and you're adding stuff over here in the timeline, it doesn't matter because you're just going to get to it eventually. And it's not, it's either going to be locked or, you know, it's going to be locked or unlocked at some point during this period. So you can add more tracks in. So that, you know, that's the point, basically. You can add them to the dynamically playing playlist and it will just get to them when it gets to them, but it won't, it'll avoid any stopping. Again, I think that's what it's saying, but this is not really my my area of expertise. As always, instantiate a variant of your thoughts at the usual places. Okay, extra speculation time. I don't really have a lot to speculate about. I am really, really pleased, after how I was banging on about it last week, that we are getting distinct tracks. I think this sounds fascinating. We will have to see whether it really works. The thing I'm kind of worried about, as I say, is listening to all of these tracks. They're not that um, nice, if you see what I mean. There's a bit of a, how can I put it? There's always a bit of a risk when you systematize something, when you make it procedural, that it becomes mechanical. And music really only works if it's not mechanical. Music is about emotion. That's what, you know, that's why we listen to music. Because it's about the emotion. It's about the feeling that the composer put into it. And you might make arguments about AI and you've heard AI tracks that are good and all that sort of stuff. AI is not intelligent. AI simply is a way of copying and remixing what people have done. And people put emotion into the art that they create. So all you're doing when you hear an AI, all that you're getting when you hear an AI track that's you know sounds good, is a remix of what people have done in effect. Just just to make that general point. So that's the point with music. Now all of these pieces, you know, can have been composed by a, a person and, and have that emotion in there. So they can all work together, and this is where it could work. You know, they can have the feeling, as it were. They do sound these, and we know that this is, you know, just placeholder. It's not necessarily the real stuff. They feel a bit more like they've been composed, you know, in a, you know, in a, a sample library, basically. So they're not, don't sound as much like they're real pieces of of music. Now that could just be because of how they've been chopped up, and that, you know, they were literally recorded and by people, and you know that they're 
chopping them up. But I so say that's kind of the problem I'm getting at. The way they've been chopped up and sliced up, and it, it's less, very much less, a, you know, a problem in this bigger, long piece with longer, longer samples in it. But this just ends up feeling like a sample library that's being thrown together in a random order. And it's not very nice to listen to. So if, it, if it's anything like this, it's going to be horrible. If it's like this, then it could work. I also like the idea that they're like extensions to tracks. I quite like that idea that you've got your piece of, you know, composed music that's, you know, you understand, you know, and it just has a uh, sort of a, a bit of a intro to it that's essentially new or randomized or generated in some way. And the ending is also different. So for the majority of it, you can listen to it, you know it, you understand it. It's just it's got some pieces around it that make give it a bit more color, a bit more flavor, a bit, a bit of variability. I quite like that idea. It also seems to be saying that these are more like these random tracks are more like uh, embellishment in a sense to the main soundtrack. You know that the five hour soundtrack is mostly what you'll be hearing most of the time and that these will just come in just to give a bit more just to make it break it up for those that have got bored of the soundtrack to give you a bit more, you know, flavor, a bit of a different slant on things. So I'm hopeful that this works and that this is, you know, successful. I would like an option to turn it off if it isn't. And if there's a model watching and it isn't in the default game, you know, in, in the base game as a way of, you know, saying, right, well, I don't want the randomized tracks. I just want the soundtrack. I'd love that mod <laughs> because I want the option to be able to select between this because if it doesn't work and it's prevalent throughout the what music plays in the game, it's going to be another one like with the whole not having gaps where I just won't be able to cope with it because I say I just the century overload that I get, I turn it off and that's it. It's gone then. I very rarely turn music back on if it's you know if I've decided to turn it off. So it would be a real shame if this is here and it doesn't work and i can't see how it, you know they're gonna they're gonna test it they're gonna experiment with it and tweak it and make sure it works so you know i'm expecting it to work if it isn't i hope there's a way of turning it off because yeah it would be a shame that you have this amazing new soundtrack that they put together and because this experiment essentially isn't as successful i end up having to turn it all off <laughs> but yes, so we will we will have to see. But as I say, I'm fingers crossed. I'm hopeful. I say I do think this, you know, even though it's you know saying it's not the actual pieces, it's it's what have you. This works better with these bigger samples than this, which was kind of horrible. <laughs> I'm totally honest. So yeah, so those are my thoughts on it. I think it's really clever. If you know more about this audio stuff, then do please feel free to connect, collect correct all of the, the things I said because it really is not my area at all um, you know the technical side of, of particularly computer you know the music that is played on computerized systems is just not my bag at all so so yeah I'd love to be corrected and find out what it is actually saying in some places so I don't really have any other speculation points but uh, I thought it might be worth touching on and I don't really have anything to show on this so I'll just scroll up to the the pretty picture um, they have announced unofficially that the game, the Space Age expansion will launch in October. They've not said when in October, but October seems to be the planned release date. The way it was actually phrased, I believe, was at least October or uh, latest. I can't, well, I say what, I don't know how it was exactly phrased, but the way it was phrased was it seemed to be like, you know, October is their latest launch date. And that therefore it could maybe come in September or it could be early October rather than late October. Obviously, what I'm getting at here is content plans. Uh, I have several video ideas like, um, you know, pre-recorded video ideas like I've done before with the wild speculation that I want to do before release. That therefore gives me a bit of a hard deadline of, you know, that point there. And also it tends to suggest if some of the things I'm talking about are going to be Friday facts, they're coming up pretty soon. So I basically need to get get my bumming gear basically and get get those produced. So there's one that's one point. So look out for more of those. I'll hopefully have a bit more time to to do some of those over summer in particular. I'm currently playing through SpaceX on my streams, live streams. Those have been going live on on YouTube, and weirdly people have been watching them. Nobody watches my live streams, but that's been fascinating basically to see a lot of what Arundel's been talking about as um you know it's clearly been put into to space exploration. 
um, and is being sort of matured into the main game. So that's been fascinating. But yes, my my plan therefore is is was always to you know sp do SpaceX up to the point when the the Space Age comes out, or I get bored, or I get annoyed, or what have you. So you know, if Space Age launches and I've not finished SpaceX, then I will just continue. There is a pretty certain chance that Space Age will break because the base engine is changing at the same time to version 2.0 will break mods. Now, my understanding is they are going to give early access to some of the key modders, some of the big modders. So maybe your angels, your bobs. Um, I don't know who actually maintains Crash Doria 2, but and obviously Erendor is, <laughs> is one of the devs now. So. You know he's going to be able to to update SpaceX, although I don't imagine he's got the time to do it much particularly. But the basic point is that some of those major mods might well carry forward because they've been given early access, but a lot of mods are going to break. So even if I wanted to continue that playthrough, I would need to work on it. You know, I'd need to keep an older version of the game in order to do that, and I'm not kind of not willing to do that really. So when Space Age launches, I will switch over all my content to Space Age. The other thing to note is that that timing is hor is horrible for me. I generally have, owing to what my job is, I generally have big deadlines that I can't miss around sort of May type time, which is a pain because that's when my birthday is. And so it makes taking holiday for my birthday difficult. And October. October, sep well, yeah, September, October is usually when the, the other big deadline is. And so that timing is horrendous for me. So there's a very good chance that I'll be having to work to really get those deadlines hit. And I won't be able to, what I'd hope to do, because this year in particular, uh, I have a massive amount of holiday that's that's accrued. I was hoping to basically take a month off. It probably wouldn't be that long, but multiple weeks off and basically space at, play Space Age you know, myself and also maybe live stream it and you know, maybe try and make some content for that. But the timing of that is pretty terrible for doing that. So unfortunately, I will probably not be your go to place for Space Age content when it launches. But we'll have to see. You know, we don't know whether, as I say, October is like the at worst case we're going to hit this and it'll actually be September, which would be a lot better for me. Uh, but we'll have to see. But yes, the big announcement basically is that Space Age is expected by October. So the end of October, we should have Space Age and also version 2.0. They've been a bit vague as to exactly which bits are in version 2.0 and which is not. I don't think they fully decided on everything, but if they do, I might do something along the lines of just a, you know, like a version 2 playthrough as well as a Space Age playthrough and just to see how the base game changes. But yeah, we'll have to see. I I've always make Huge plans for content and then life gets in the way and I, you know, I don't do it. So, so yeah, so that's just to let you know what my content plans are, such as they are, over the next few months while we get uh, Space Age, uh, before we get Space Age, sorry. I hope you enjoyed today's Friday Facts video and might consider coming back for another one. If you'd like to chat about the latest Factorio Friday Facts, you can find me live streaming Factorio every Saturday and Sunday over on my Twitch channel, at Trismagistus. Thanks for watching. Cheers.